Hi you guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Allie Wilkins. If it's your first time here, hello, welcome. If you're coming back, I'm so happy that you're back. So today we're gonna talk about just the concept of rest, slowing down in comparison to busy lifestyles. Now, I could talk about this for so long, so I don't really know what we're gonna talk about specifically within that paradigm today, but actually let's talk about rest is lazy. This is a common thread that comes up for all of us when we tune into slowing down or resting. So let's start with the programming that's created that. Essentially, being busy is celebrated, right? If someone is busy, we just automatically think, oh, they're busy, they're important. They have a lot going on. They're popular, they're cool, they're um, successful, they're like all things that are like, oh, this person's doing well in life because they're busy. And if we started to reframe the idea of what success actually looks like and what busyness actually means, it gives us actually a really different look. So it's not like, oh, that person's actually not doing well. Like, it's not about that. It's about thinking about, do I want to be busy? Is being busy a way that I want to actually experience my life? Because I've been programmed to think that people who are busy are really important and they're successful and they're happy and they're like, this is what success looks like. For me, you guys, if you've been following me for a long time, you know that I'm like about the ease. Like, I don't enjoy fast paced stuff. I like, like I wor I've worked for myself for several years, so I create my own schedule. And I know that I have a very unique experience in that with what I do, it's easy for me to be able to do that. But like, I don't want to have my days packed. That's not fun for me. I still will have a lot of things to do each day because I desire to be of impact and I just am guided intuitively to do a lot of those things. Or I have, you know, yoga scheduled and meetings with people scheduled and client stuff scheduled and things that I'm creating. However, I'm not like running all over the place, busy, busy, busy. I never have a moment to myself. Okay, so that's really more of the energy of what I'm talking about. It's like something for you to sit with is, am I happy about how I'm spending my time? Because a lot of times when we're busy, it's like stuff that we might not really even want to be doing. However, we think it's normal to be busy and we think that it's good to be busy. And if we're not busy, that indicates a problem. Or we can be slow or restful or chilling out for a little while, but if we stay in that space for too long, it starts to mean something different. It starts to mean that we're not utilizing our time well. Now, this is something that like particularly, I think can be really damaging within the personal development industry. I've been, I've been into that whole thing for, I don't know, the last 15 years or something because, you know, who doesn't want to be a better version of themselves? Well, a lot of people don't, but most, if you're watching this, you want to be a better version of yourself, right? And so there's so much with that that's like, well, that means that you have to be doing this and this and that, and you can rest for like one or two days, but then after that, you shouldn't be doing that because it means you're not utilizing your time well, and it means this and it means that. Our relationship to time is really skewed our relationship to like okay so i want you to just think about think about like a, a culture in the amazon that there's there's a tribe there and they're operating in communion with each other think about how their days are and what their time is spent like there's probably a lot of like i don't want to say like dilly dallying but you know they're not rushing off to things all over the place there's this slowness to it they have things that they're doing. They're not just sitting around staring at a wall all day, but they're, there's this slowness built in. And it's like, why do we have to have this underlying emotion of busy, pressured, have to do this, have to do that? It's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. And like, I will be the one to break this paradigm. I'm fine with that because if you've seen some of my other videos, I'm like, I'm a professional rester. I'm really good at being slow. I'm really good at being still. So there's so much stuff that can come up when we look at why am I making myself busy? The first thing, what I just said, well, it's ingrained in us that we're not successful if we're not busy, right? If we're busy, it indicates that we have a lot going on and that we're important. That makes our egos very happy, right? And it also tells us sort of, it gives us sort of an indication that we're going somewhere in life and we're doing things right. Okay, I forget what I was saying about the like one, two, three. Um, so the second part of this is, let me think, let me get back to my train of thought. 
Okay, so thinking about for me, health really helps me with this whole con conversation because it's like if we live these really, really busy lives and we have a culture that's very sick, full of diseases, right? Like we have a lot of illness in our society and it's not to say that there's not illness in slower societies. However, us pushing our bodies and not listening to our bodies because we think that slowing down means we're lazy has an impact on our health. So I often think about when my body is like, yo, you need to take a nap. Like you are so tired right now. Sure, you can go get another cup of coffee and push through if you want. Like you physically will be able to do that. But you could also just take an hour nap. What's the big deal? And my mind's like, well, the big deal is that then I'm lazy and I shouldn't do that. And I should be spending my time better. All these shoulds, right? And also like, well, I'm not gonna have as, I'm not gonna be as efficient and maybe I need to get more clients so I can't be spending that time sleeping. I have to be working or I need, I need to get these things done so I have to do this. So think about right now what your own things are that come up for yourself because I have a different lifestyle than you do. So what parts, what comes up for you specifically? What are the stories that come up for you of like why you cannot slow down, why it's not okay? I think about, this might be dramatic or, or whatever, but it helps me. It's like, okay, what if I was going to get a disease in 50 years, knock on wood, because I ignored all of these signs that my body was telling me. Our bodies are wise. Our bodies give us warning signs. It's not just like, oh, you have a disease now. It's like there were 45,000 warning signs. Were you paying attention enough? Were you listening to yourself enough? By the way, this isn't to shame anyone. I hope that this doesn't like offend anybody. This is just the process that my mind goes through when I'm thinking about taking a nap or slowing down or taking a day off when I have things that I, in quotes, should be doing. So it's not meant to be like attacking to you. It's just my own mental process. Um, I'll think like, how much does it cost to have a disease in 40 years? Because I'm ignoring what my body's telling me. Now, there's also, I just have to say this here as a caveat, also our self-sabotage can come in in certain ways. For me, it used to be with like sleeping or cleaning stuff up or like, oh, I'll do this after I clean this or I'll do this after I, you know, I just feel really tired all of a sudden. You have to, first of all, like step one, be able to discern if that's self-sabotage or not. That's not what this video is about though, because there's an underlying theme of like rest is lazy, just running through our society that's making a lot of us sick and crazy. So, but that's just a caveat. Notice if you're trying to avoid something by sleeping or taking a nap or getting extra rest or taking a day off because you don't want to face something. That's different. Anyways, so I'll think about, you know, is my body trying to warn me something right now? And if I continually skip this or push through, what's the cost later on down the road of doing that? And usually like if my body's asking for a nap and I take a nap, I'll wake up and have way better ideas or be able to approach something way better. Sometimes it's not the case, but it's anyway. So that's just something that, that comes in handy for me is thinking about my health. Like what is my body actually trying to tell me? Because if you think about how you're operating, just even like, I don't know how to say this, like your own pulse, like your, your, how you feel when you're like running on empty, how you feel after you've been running errands all day or um, yeah, just doing stuff all day. It's like you're wiped out, right? So then if you keep your body at that state, it's like if you keep your phone at like 5% charged all the time, I don't really know what that would do with the battery, but like <laughs> trying to come up with an example of that, but you know, you see what I'm saying? You're not taking, if you're not charging the phone, if you're not charging yourself, taking care of yourself long term, what is the effect of that? Like you're weaker, you're weaker in general, or the phone might be weaker because it's used to running with just a tiny bit of battery, but it might actually appear that it's able, it's like re, the word like resilient is coming in. Like it's, it might actually appear like you're able to handle a lot of pressure. You do really re, well under pressure. This is probably like a key code. If people tell you that you need to start resting. If people think that you're like, you know, oh, you're so, it's like the example of they're so strong. They always have it all together. They're probably breaking apart inside and just don't show you. So yeah, you just need to consider like, what is this doing to my body? So that's sort of the second part of this. And the third part is like, what comes up for me when I start talking about, or when I start really thinking about slowing down. So a couple of questions that you can sit with here. 
Number one, do I like spending time by myself? This is not going to apply to everybody who watches this. You, Everyone's going to have their own little unique potion of, you know, what their relationship is to rest. Like my relationship is so good with rest. I probably need to push myself a little more, like, but I'm also like really ambitious at the same time, but that relationship has changed a bit over the years, but I still go for what I really want. Right? So it's not like I'm just notice. Oh my God, I just did it. Do you guys see this? This is live in real, in real moment time and in, in real time. <laughs> I'm trying to show you that I'm not just some like lazy bum. Literally, I'm just doing that and I'm somebody who's really good at resting and slowing down. So interesting. Whoa, thanks spirit for that unique moment. Anyways, um, so I was gonna say that this won't apply to everybody because uh, not everyone is doing this, but sometimes people are subconsciously keeping themselves busy to avoid stuff. Keeping themselves busy to avoid so think about it this way. If you like just go through a breakup or something or you're going through or someone maybe passed away and you're just sitting in your house by yourself. There's not distractions around you. You, you could distract yourself, of course, but like pretend there's no distractions. You're going to be sitting in those feelings. That's going to be uncomfortable, right? It's healthy, but it's also uncomfortable. So some people will actually try to distract themselves to the point that it becomes a coping mechanism to be busy. And then it also comes with this reward of like, oh, well, because I'm busy, I'm like important and I'm successful and I'm doing things right in life. And like, you're also then rewarded for that coping mechanism. But, but the question to ask yourself is, do I like being by myself? What is my relationship to being by myself? Could I spend a week by myself and not see anybody? If you would be really uncomfortable with that, I'm sorry, that's a problem. You need, you need to be able to be comfortable with yourself. And if you can't be with yourself, it means that there's things that you don't want to see. The more time that you can spend by yourself, the more you will understand yourself. Because when we're surrounded by other people, we see our, well, you know, there's benefits to both, of course. But when we're surrounded by other people, we're not in our true authentic state most of the time. We are, you know how sometimes like you have one friend that you have a different relation, like you show up a little bit different with this friend over here than you do this one. It's like you show different parts of yourself because you're complementing their energy or you're, you're going with their energy. So it shifts your energy just like a little bit or it highlights probably more so this. It highlights specific parts of your own energetic being with that specific person. So when you're by yourself, there's not any of that. It's just you and your, and your innateness and yourself. That's it. So you get to actually see who you are by yourself. Fully expressed too, because there's nobody around you to like judge you. So you'll probably show up more yourself. But also it gives you a chance to look at what actually comes up. When, when you're out with your friends all the time talking about stuff, you're only going to go so deep because you're pre oh, oh, the waiter's coming with food or you're watching this movie or you're dancing at the club or you're going on vacation and going to these cool places. Like you're only going to be able to go so deep with them, but the stuff that's really underneath the surface isn't going to come up because there's not space for it to. So when you're by yourself, the really uncomfortable stuff is going to come up. So a lot of people will have a pattern of like, no, no, I need to be doing stuff. And you'll like literally fill your space, but you're probably not going to think that you're doing that. You're going to just think like, no, I just have a really busy life. So there's, there's something for all of us to sit in with that. Um, where am, where am I busying myself up to like to be an avoidance or am I doing that? Cause you're not going to realize that you are cause you're subconsciously doing it. So yeah, the whole concept of rest, like our society needs to rest more. We need to be more comfortable with rest. But also here's the thing. I saw this post the other day that was so brilliant. And it was like, it was, a, it was like a me, like a Twitter thing, a tweet from somebody. And it was like, this whole time I thought that I was resting, but I was actually just disassociating. They're two different things. It's not, resting isn't numbing out. It's giving yourself space to breathe. So like, and I'm not like, like saying that we shouldn't do this, but you know, if I'm watching a show or something, that's re that's relaxing in some form, but it's also just like, I'm not present in the moment. I'm like tuned into this thing over here. I like, 
you you know how you kind of just like um zone in on this specific thing but you're not really like there <laughs> you're not really like existing you're just watching this thing does that make sense you're not actually in the present moment so for example like resting or relaxing like giving yourself a massage or taking a bath with no distractions and it's not like so you judge how you're relaxing or resting i just thought that, that post was so interesting of like actually i've been dissociating my this whole time just shutting down you know i'm on all day at work and then i just shut down and like what's the in between in that space how can you still be present and you still be like um, there's this one card in this deck I use that's called the internal explorer. It's like, how can you internally explore yourself and see what's really true for you? See what's coming up for you and be willing to sit with that. And I don't really want to go into this in this video, but it's a component I think that's worth mentioning just like a little drop and then I'll leave it alone. Like so much of what, how we have learned to operate in our worlds really rids us, rids us of our power. If we aren't willing to look at what's coming up for ourselves, we don't even know who we are. We're just wearing these masks of like, hi, I'm, I'm Brittany and I'm a real estate agent and I live in Oklahoma and I do, I don't know anybody like this, by the way, that that's their story. But it's like, we wear all these stupid masks of like, that's not who you are. Your soul is who you are and it just is. So we have to come back to remember that like so much of what we've been taught and the ways we've been taught to operate keep us out of our true power. They keep us out of actually knowing who we are. So if you can take the time like and be brave enough to spend time by yourself and to slow down and to face what comes up for you when you do that, likely there's initially going to be words like lazy. Um, I'm a bum. I'm not doing enough. I should be doing this. I should be spending my time doing that. Uh, something that's, so here's one thing that I'll share that, like I said, I'm a professional rester. I just have learned, like, when I listen to my body, I'm rewarded. But it may not be initially or immediately. So, for example, like a month ago, I just, also just as somebody who's an empath and who's very sensitive to energy, like, I don't, I just don't have an option. Sometimes I just, anyways. So, for like five days, I just sat on the couch and watched TV, which is not something that I do. I will go months without watching TV and then I'll watch like a one season in like two days of something. But so I was sitting there like, I don't, I can't work. I don't feel, my body wants me to do nothing. My body wants me to just like, it like be on the couch with, you know, snacks and watch TV. It doesn't, I don't want to do anything else. And it's not like, cause I'm avoiding doing something. It's like, I physically cannot. My body's like, you need to tune out and rest because there's a lot of other energetic updates and things or energetic attunements and things going on. You need to just be because you're being worked on. <laughs> that might not resonate with everybody here. That's okay. Um, so I was supposed to be in quotes, getting something ready for a launch. And I was like, I, my body is just being so strong about this. Like, I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to do it. And you know, it's like day three of me just like, numbed out watching tv on the couch like the and i'm like sh i really think that i should be doing working on this new program i'm creating i really think that i should be building the landing page for this i really think i should be doing that and it's like you're at no my body was like no then so there was literally five days of me doing that in a row and i would stop and do yoga and have like little client calls and stuff but like for the most part, that's what I was doing. Day five, I'm like, really? Like another day of this? This doesn't feel... And then day six, it's like, boom, I have a thousand new ideas, things that are coming in from that are way more efficient, way more effective, simplifying things so much that I was going to do something in a specific way. And I had just like so much of a better idea. And it's like I was rewarded for giving myself that time. Again, with the caveat, I wasn't in self-sabotage mode because I've already taken the time in my life to decipher when am I operating under self-sabotage, when am I afraid, or just wanting to tune out or escape, and so I'm like, oh, let's just sleep and take a nap because I want to avoid these feelings. That's totally different than, like, my body is saying something. So you have to also determine how your body speaks to you um, and take the time to do that because it will take time for you to figure that out. 
So anyways, let me, I feel like there's so much more I could say about slowing down, resting, creating a more still life. Uh, the other thing I think that comes up for me sometimes is like then, cause my life is just very slow cause I create my own schedule and I'm just like, I'm have what I need. So it's like, why would I need to make myself busier? It doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't, when I'm around people who are really, really busy, I'm like, ugh, this doesn't feel good in my body. Like I can feel their, I can feel their hectic, chaotic energy from doing all these things. And it's like, ugh, it just doesn't feel good in my system. So why would I want to go back to that? It's also a lot easier when you sort of leave the traditional nine to five world, the matrix, all of that because you start to create your own rules for how life works, which you really can't do to the same extent when you are operating in the condition and the patternings of something else that's very firmly created. So yeah, something that will come up for me sometimes is I'll see people still operating in that structure and I'm like, oh, I must be doing it wrong. I must be doing something wrong, even though I feel more peace than I ever have, even though I feel more fulfilled than I ever have, even though I feel like I'm actually experiencing life the way it's supposed to be experienced, I must be doing it wrong. The programming is so deep. I've been out of the corporate world for four years. It still affects me. So it's, it's like, just start observing and noticing like, where am I being busy out of obligation? Where am I doing stuff that I actually don't want to do? Where am I like ma creating more busyness than needs to actually happen? You know, another example is sort of like when we put a zillion things in our to-do list and it's like, is this even important for me to do? Like, would resting feel better? Would relaxing feel better? Would me, I'm saying I want to be reading. I'm saying I want to do sound healings. I'm saying I want to like, lay on my acupressure mat. I'm saying I want to get massages, but I'm saying I also need to go to Target and get this thing today, or I'm saying I need to fix this thing in the garage. Like, does it really matter? Could I, what if I just left this space open? And that's another thing perhaps you could try if you do have sort of like a, if you're like, I don't like being by myself. I don't like I prefer to spend my time with other people or having stuff to do it. Like I feel this uncomfortability with having space and I just get bored. First of all, um, well, I'm not going to go there. Something that you could try is like, I'm going to schedule 30 minutes per day where there's nothing to do, nothing planned. And I'm just going to see what I feel like doing. I'm just going to, that space is only for me. Nobody else is going to be in my space during that time. Just different if you have kids, figure out something different there. <laughs> get a babysitter or something, but like schedule that time of space for yourself so you can start to get more comfortable. That's the only way you're going to get more comfortable if you put yourself in it. And, um, what I was going to say about the boredom piece is like, and I, it's hard to say this without like snark to it, which is why I'm trying, I'm like taking my time with this. Like I spend so much of my time by myself. Now I'm in a very particular phase of my life where I'm just by myself the vast majority of the time. I am never bored, literally never bored. There are endless things for me to do. And it's like within yourself, how can you think about really what am, if you're someone, if you're aligning with that bored piece, what are the things you want to explore? Why is it that you feel bored when people aren't around you or when you don't have stuff to do? What is it that you're curious about? How, what can you explore in yourself? I think that that maybe is another video. So please in the comments, put in this, like what you took away from this, what stuck with you, what landed for you, what felt resonant for you. Um, if there's specific questions or specific beliefs that come up that you want me to like go into deeper, because like I said, this is something that I'm just, it comes very naturally to me. So I don't always like see the nuance of the things that I'm doing. So if there's something I said that you're like, um, you need to talk way more about that. Please let me know because I just like don't know because it's like, if you already know how to ride a horse, you might not know how to teach somebody to ride a horse, right? You guys get what I'm trying to say. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I always try to share things that have supported me in coming deeper into my own spirituality and so my innate essence of my soul really and that have helped me sort of dissolve off the pro get rid of the gross programming and conditioning that is just coding us in our society so that we can really remember who we are and create life on our terms so if you want more of that please subscribe to the channel share the videos with people that you think would enjoy them 
I'm doing this for free for you guys. There's, you know, because I want to share this so that it can support other people because I've received so much wisdom from other people doing the same. So in, in return, if you liked this video, if you can just like it, comment on it, that helps more people find it. And I'm doing it purely so other people can access this stuff for free. Um, so anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you later. Bye.